Hello. I have just I was going to say completed, but moved past would be more correct. The uh, ninth night. So nine days and nine nights of quite a challenging fast. Now when I say fasting, I allowed myself breakfast only. Um, it, it always stuck in my mind this... Um, this book I read about Buddhism where um, it was explained um, that they don't eat after 12 o'clock. That might not be across the board, but it, that's what the book said. And uh, I did experiment in the past uh, before I entered into this new lifestyle with a few days of uh, intense fasting here and there. Uh, same method, only breakfast. And uh, when you're used to eating three meals a day, that's that's quite challenging. Um, now, obviously, uh, when I embarked upon the the new lifestyle, living uh, mobile, had a lot of troubles and uh, did put on weight in the way that us human beings, some of us, tend to when we we go through um, difficult times. Some people turn to drink. Some people. Um, you know just make a list of all the silly addictions and, and escapisms that you know that we are prone to um, it could be argued that my form of escapism is meditation and spiritual considerations etc if they weren't so goddamn difficult sometimes benefits are lovely but it's not easy uh, at all really it's easy to talk about it it's easy to post stuff on facebook put your picture with some wise words on it every day or five times a day like some people do good lord there's nothing wrong with that but five times a day come on and more come on it's distractions away from the work now whenever you talk about fasting or there's always going to be someone that says that they spent a whole year you know eating one grain of rice and one drop of rainwater a day and um i will look at the results and um if i look at this person's eyes even for a photograph and i don't see or i don't feel uh, some kind of admiration in terms of this person seeing something, as this person knows something. I, if I'm not drawn to that person, then it's like we'll just save it. Oh God, it's, it's everything's a competition, right? Um, I can tell you nine, nine night, nine, nine days and nine nights. And uh, that was my goal, obviously, uh, in emulation of the myth. Now, I could have gone more extreme. Maybe I will in the future. But as as my first prolonged fasting experience, that was uh, to only eat one meal a day. And now I'm telling you that with the headaches and the periods of depression, but the evenings, most of them, the bliss in meditation as one becomes so identified with the thought that the body disappears and I could see in perfect crystal clarity one of my own drawings in front of me almost as if I was there and uh, I didn't quite go there but you see there is the normal vision there is the imagination and there seems to be a third kind of quality obviously they're all connected in some way but there seems to be a third kind of quality that is so bright and vivid and uh, I see this in my dreams sometimes I felt like I was pushing on that door I have 
gone through that door a few times in meditation um, for a few moments here and there. But um, <sighs> these are usually kind of lucky. You never know when they're going to happen. And, you know, if you, you can't really force them on, they just, you know, they happen from time to time. But um, this was more sustained, so it gives me, uh, you know, a, an insight, literally, into what's possible in the future. Um, I could bang on about lots of stuff. I shouldn't really, like, you know, you have to... Um, operate with some kind of discretion. But yes, Sword of Damocles hangs over my head. And I was just saying um, to my teacher and fellow um, brothers and sisters the other day, If you're comfortable, nothing happens, you know, you need a bit of friction. Too much friction can destroy people, just the right amount of friction can really inspire, uh, you know, one to, uh, with a kind of zeal, I wouldn't want to say anger, but there is some anger there, and uh, you see, everything's permissible as long as it's watched, as long as it's controlled, as long as, um, you see, if you fight against it, you're getting caught up, right? different methods for different days different occasions it's an ongoing process but you know I've lost a little bit of weight I feel a little bit lighter my sleep sleeping pattern has corrected itself I need less sleep uh, I plan to carry this on for as long as I can stand it and I can stand a lot <laughs> Because I've had some nights of hell. But you see, when you're sitting there, and it's like, see, what happened to me is when I first started living this lifestyle out on the open road, cooking is fun sometimes. Other times, you know, it's raining. Oh, you see, I need to open the doors up to put the gas fire on and cook something. And it's not really appropriate for certain types of, you know, cooking, which are better done on an open fire outside, which I've done a few times. Um, most days I don't really want to be doing anything complicated uh, like that. So I felt that temptation to go and buy something, ready, prepared, and... Uh, this needs to be rare because all it takes is two or three days of I'm concentrating on something else. I'll just grab something here, grab something, and it's all. I'll see what happens to truck drivers. No, I see how it happens. I see how you get to the stage where you're looking down, and you can't see your shoes, you know. And uh, you know, if one is engaged in meditation and a spiritual discipline, it needs to be reflected in the physicality at least within a couple of years of, you know, beginning in earnest, right? It doesn't, you know, we might, we might make excuses in the beginning stages, but, you know, when I see, you know, bless them, I'm not, you know, I don't want to be horrible, but when, you know, when I see these guys in a robe that are like, you know, 150 kilograms or something, you know, waddling around with a, Nemi's headdress or, or something it's like I feel I just feel sorry for him because you can't take him seriously it's like inner discipline it should be expressed through the body out into the world in other words through the physicality out into one's uh, actions deeds and through someone's words as well you know I might even start swearing less who knows anything's possible so, uh, yeah. The mind is so tricky. It's always finding ways to avoid things. There's this, there's this thing called pro, uh, proactive procrastination. 
It's like you do something that's actually you should do and is actually not the thing you would necessarily choose, but you do it because it's easier than the other thing that is harder that you need to do more urgently. It's like, oh, I should fill in those forms, but oh, the van needs tidying up. Oh, I'll do the tidy up the van. When you'd rather be, you know, um, I don't know, chatting to some hottie online, <laughs> probably. <laughs> oh, God, I don't. Lockdown. Lockdown, lockdown, lockdown. It's pathetic. I mean, uh, the levels of fear and, and petty-minded. See, what it does is it exposes the, the, the true nature of people. See, uh, again, when, when you're comfortable, nothing happens, right? It's like, you go to work, come home, yeah, how are you, talk about the weather. But when the friction comes, it separates the wheat from the chaff. Either you see nobility or you see a kind of petty-minded nastiness. And, uh, I mean, there was one morning I, you know, I left my, oh, for God's sake, even now, it's like someone's in a rush to fucking pull up two inches from the front of my van. You can just feel the, the bird-brained panic. Uh, what was I saying? It's the vibe of this um, creature is um, affecting my consciousness right now. See, that's what happens, you know, if you're aware. You cannot be unaware. And, you know, compassion is something that I could talk about too, but um, it would involve telling stories that I shouldn't really. Um, but you see, at the same time as the compassion develops through these difficult times, also the... Um, just the... I don't know, there's not a word for it. You know, you're just shaking your head like... Oh, like there is no answer to the human condition in terms of society. And most people just are not going to be able to step outside of the, the, the slavery that is imposed upon them by the government. Sad, but it's true. And, you know, a lot of very sweet people. Um, you know, I'll tell you what, being a single guy, when you're going through dating sites, you see a lot of tragedy. And, you know, when you're chatting to, you know, people and, and, um, and again, a lot of selfishness, you know. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this situation, I left my van the other day and this guy, he goes, you're not going to be camping up there. I'm like, what? You've been parked there in three days. It's the through road down. Ah, yes. oh. she's so looking at the guy like this guy's like old enough to be my dad. Like, what is this? What is this poor creature? Is it sitting? What is missing in your life that you feel the need to notice everything else outside of you and project your misery upon it and make judgments? So yeah, I parked here the last three nights. I'll be gone soon and I'll come back another day and uh, it's none of your business. I'm legally parked. Please, please. I said, you never grew up, did you? You never grew up. Look at you, a child. You know, and I felt a little bit guilty about that. Like, mm, maybe I should have just said nothing. But you see, I just got up. I was like, just literally got up. Out. It's like I got someone like, nye, nye. like what? So, this is the problem. Things they catch you in the most awkward moments, and you have to say to yourself, next time I should be prepared to just hold eye contact, take a breath, and um, choose one's words very carefully, um, or perhaps choose to say nothing. Because we all know that silence uh, is, a, is a power all of its own on, on many, many levels. And um, you live and learn. 
every day, all the time, but you don't want to keep having to learn the same lesson over and over again because you didn't have what it takes to take it on board. Has to come a point where you have solidified in certain areas along the way. But we all have um, moments and it's not that serious. I've been introduced to an idea that you should only do uh, in private as well what you would be happy to be seen to be doing in public. That's a very powerful statement. Um, now, obviously, leaving out certain private <laughs> things that we have to do, I think that's, you know, I think that's important too. Because, you know, I was, I was by the van the other day, you know, just out in the countryside and I, obviously I don't litter, I don't like littering, but I think it was like, uh, I mean, I don't mind chucking tea bags down next to a plant because it probably feeds the plant, you know, any banana skins, things like that. But it was a cotton bud, it was made of, I thought, oh, it's only made of paper, it will just, and I didn't have the bin ready and I just like flicked it on the ground and I thought, would I do that if, uh, you know, one of my um, brothers or sisters was with me today visiting? No, when I picked it up, put it back in the bin. You see, there's a, when society is turning on you all the time, when you live outside of normal um, life modes, it's like a flock mentality. They want to stab out. They, every, you know, curtain twitching. I had someone, I mean, I was just parked up the other day. Someone, I'll find it. Oh God, how close do you need to park? Yes, go, go now. Right, um, is it here? I think it's in here. Just give me a few moments. Why will it not? Maybe I'll put it in the other one. Why did I do that? It doesn't belong in that one. You don't know what I'm talking about and I'm not even going to apologise and I'm not going to... Uh, Oh, it's not there. I wonder where it went. Oh, it must be around somewhere. Anyway, someone handed me a card. I was just sitting there the other day and uh, I made a drawing of it actually in my diary. Um, where is it? I just put that just only that section on. Porch light. Are you homeless or sleeping rough? Know someone who is? Call our free helpline. The guy was like, you know, we got we can we can help you back, you know, to you know, obviously having a home, a house, uh, just looking at him like, I could see he was a good guy, you know, probably a Christian as well, because I was parked outside a church, you know, you know, a real Christian as opposed to a fire and brimstone nutcase. Um, uh, <laughs> It's like, thank you, but I, uh, I'm okay. Thank you very much. Please tell whoever called you that, you know, please don't worry. I'm a local window cleaner. Stop here for a few days, a month, do my job, then I'm off again. So I tell them not to, not to panic. Look. And then a few seconds later, someone just comes up to me and goes, right, mate, 
Is that a camper van you're living in there? I've got one of these like power converter things here. Just plug it in your cigarette lighter there and you, you've got like a plug, switch it on. And I was like, uh, will that blow my systems? No, plug it, plugged it in. The wire's a bit knackered, you have to twist it to get it to stay on, but that's 10 quid. I can now charge my electric toothbrush and hopefully my teeth will return to their former whiteness soon. <laughs> Run my laptop, you know. I mean, what more do you need? Like, I've got a cigarette lighter. Now I've got a plug socket. Uh, I wouldn't want to run anything too powerful off of that, but I have the option. Um, who needs a fridge? It's cold. Don't need a heater, because I've got one. It's called the, 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 the heater that's in the... the natural, you know, the engine, the heater that comes with any vehicle. Just blast that, it, you know, it's diesel money, costs money like any heating in a home. Uh, you know, I can always build a fire if I can be bothered and I've got some cooking to do. Got a roof, got a bed, got blankets. I've got clothing to keep me warm. Now let's talk about what I don't have. What I don't have is that feeling where you get up in the morning and it's like, oh, God, my neighbor is a twat. And there's nothing you can do. You just have to, I only have to stay in one place for, you know, maybe eight to 10 hours, the, the, the longest, like, cause I'll be sleeping. I have to sleep somewhere, obviously, right? I can always just drive off. Now I'm not, there's always, there are always going to be some considerations in terms of, I come back to the same towns because that's where my, my work is. No one can be free. No man is an island. You need things from other people. You, you know, um, you know what I'm talking about. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, one needs to earn a, a living. Um, But yeah, these are testing times, formative times. And I would, you know, part of me wishes, I turned 44 the other day. Part of me wishes I could go back to my late teens, early 20s and embark upon this adventure. But we all feel like that. Trouble is, it's everything that you went through in those years that creates the, um, the attitude that, you know, puts you, you know, where you are now. Um, you know, you pay for everything. You can't, you know, if I was to say, I, I put it this way, I'm lucky that I'm, that I'm able to do this now while I'm still young, you know, and, um, you only have to meet people in their eighties to realize you are still young. And, um, when you meet people that are in their 20s in this, you know, world of, you know, the occult and meditation and, you know, the mystical arts and alternative history and all that kind of stuff. To be honest, most of them spent too much time on the internet, not enough time reading actual books. So... I know if I hadn't have put in all those years reading actual books in a time when we didn't have Facebook on your phone pinging every five seconds, I wouldn't have the necessary backing to be able to have an accelerated experience now. I'm not saying it couldn't be done, but my experience is accelerated by also an appreciation of... Um, Uh, of having such a wonderful opportunity. I'll be honest, I did say, um, I did say to my teacher the other day, I don't ever sit around thinking about my pension or how do I get rich? Human lifetime is so short. 
and there are horses for courses. To be or not to be, that is the question. You have to find out, well, put it this way, let's use the analogy of finding your true will and going for it, you know? That's why so many people are very unhappy, even though they're very comfortably, uh, comfortable financially speaking or, or whatever. Because they have done what society expects of them and they are comfortable but bored and unfulfilled. Whereas if you take the risk of being poor, facing, you know, a few potential dangers and going out on a limb, taking a risk, but really doing what you want to do, you might find that you're looking at it from the other angle. You're a little bit bedraggled and, you know, been, and weather beaten, but strangely fulfilled. It's true that the more time you spend in meditation, the more you bring the blessings of meditation into your daily life. It's true. But meditation can't fill your stomach. It can't um, fulfill certain needs. It can't do everything. You still need to be in the world. In the world, but not of it. <sighs> Anything else I need to say? Yeah, something on the runes. On the ninth night, I completed a diagram of the runes. Actually, I'll put it up as the next video. Um, and um, I will do like a, a, an art video one day in the future. Um, obviously, I do a lot of art, but I just can't do, you know, you can't put every little thing you do and think and say online, otherwise you're living online and not living in reality. Um, thinking of the novel Dune, the Butlerian Jihad, I feel like it's a very strong possibility. All this talk of technology that can, you know, use your brain waves or whatever, you know, to control a computer game and good Lord. So as if we're not living online enough now. And it's not all bad, don't get me wrong, but it's still um, like I said, you see the evidence when you meet younger people and it's worrying. Um, but yeah, the runes. See these runes, they look cool, don't they? Actually, I'll put them, I'll put them on screen now. There's no point making another video. I can do that. It's a bit like tarot, right? You're never going to get a full scientific, solid understanding of exactly, but there's something beautiful there to explore. And if you don't make the attempt to, to look and and, uh, you know, meditate upon the symbology. And, um, but, you know, in a similar way to the tarot, there is an expansiveness of, um, of life's um, archetypal qualities, uh, uh, um, a fulfillment, um, I'm trying to think of the right word. Um, a totality of life's varying um, qualities and stages and experiences. This is what makes divination tools so um, useful and yet at the same time so frustrating in their 
um, vagueness. Uh, but you see, when you contemplate symbols um, from various systems that have been in the, you know, the racial group, uh, the consciousness, um, the the, the um, what they call it, the collective consciousness of humanity. Um, when you really imbibe them, they begin to speak back. And uh, I mean, I'm interested in uh, the whole world, you know, but obviously. For obvious reasons, you only have to look into my eyes to see that ancient Europe is a uh, is obviously my home, and um, in the deepest states of meditation, sometimes uh, when one is not looking, you know, one might hear a word or see a vision, a glimpse, a tiny. And uh, I was given a word um, through my experience a little while back, actually. It comes to mind now. It comes to mind now the more I'm realising that um, how important memory training is in these um, arts. You see, my memory... <laughs> you know, um, ironically enough, is I'm not sure if I was meditating on the fallen megalith or I was at home or in the van. I can't place where I was, but whoever the whoever the druids were had a vibe. Come, just a, a flavour. And this is also on my mind now because in my last meditation just moments ago, I heard just a few snippets of speech, language. Um, that I instantly understood to be perhaps some kind of... Um, ancient language like you know Gaelic or you know Welsh or I don't know some British ancient language um, but this word uh, this word that I was given uh, I believe is very important